come on up and we see no, you no. live in the Taver case with Dr. Kinney and Dr. Kovacic and the team. The yellow, Vicky. Zero yellow. Okay. Dr. Kinney, you're live. Okay, cool. Okay, we have a case number seven being shown, 80-year-old male who has a worsening dyspnea, essentially aortic stenosis, has had prior BAV recently. He had presented with a heart failure. And more important, you know, the reason for us to show this case is when you have a patient with multiple comorbidities, already decision has been made that he's towered, but you have renal insufficiency with a creatinine 3.5, then you do not do a CT scan for the measurement of the iota. So we have done some other uh, way of measuring the annulus. So we'll go over those uh, uh, techniques that we have done here. Okay, JK, take over. Sure, yeah. just next slide, please. So as you said, uh, creatinine's three and a half here. I think we'll come, we'll, we'll come back to the echo because I think sizing on 3D echo is very important here. So let's skip through this. Safe to say it's heavily calcified valve and severe AS. Next slide. So high risk, as we've said. Intermediate risk, sorry. Next slide. Good. So this is the sizing. So we had a patient a couple of years ago that had hepatorenal syndrome with varices. We couldn't do uh, sizing on 3D transesophageal, so we did sizing on MR, and we've built up a little bit of experience with sizing on MR. So we size with MR, MRI, and the CT side by side. The CT is now a non-contrast CT. So what you're looking at on the left side of the screen is the MRI image. This is done with a, a 3D steady state free precession acquisition. It's not the normal non-contrast. Yeah. So non-contrast, we're not giving gadolinium either. And you can see there we've got very nice definition of the annulus uh, and the CT also showing us no calcium. MRI does not detect calcium, so you need to do both in parallel to see what your calcification okay. is. You can see there the CT of the leaflets on the lower left, very heavy calcification of the leaflets, somewhere. but not of the annulus itself. And you, we've got an angle off the MRI there on the lower right of about 58 degrees for deployment. Next. You can see they're going down to the LVOT. Very nice definition as well. And the SOV uh, and reasonable oh, really? measurements. And just, to, sorry, just go back one slide, please. Key thing on the sizing of the annulus was we're getting a mean of about 80. Just minus one slide. Back one slide. You'll see the annula there. The perimeter is about 80. And we'll confirm that with the 3D echo. Go forward. And forward again, measurements very reasonable. Looking up to the uh, STJ, you can see the CT on the right, MR on the left, the That's CT good, for yeah. the calcium, showing some significant calcification there. Coronary heights off the CT That's are very reasonable. Absolutely. Next. Uh, and here's our access. The access is done off the non-contrast CT. Certainly in leaner patients, you get very reasonable uh, images showing that there's very reasonable and acceptable access in this patient. Next. So to summarize with a perimeter of 80, it's a, a 20, going to be a 29 Evolute Pro valve uh, by all the measurements. Next. <coughs> so there's a summary of the case. I think we should just go to the 3D echo now. Gila, would you just take us through your sizing and see how the MR matched up with the 3D transesophageal for us, please? Sure. So um, here we're looking at a four chamber view just to yeah, show that. Louder. Sorry, we're looking at a four chamber view just to show that the LV and RV function are normal. Um, we can see the aortic valve, very calcified, very um, narrow uh, orifice, and again, confirming okay. a very high gradient of uh, mean of 44, peak velocity of 4.1. This is a 3D um, view of the aortic valve. We can see it, uh, again, very calcified and very immobile valve. And then if we go to sizing, yeah, to this is where we size the annulus. So if you see here, we use the 3D um, data set to align our planes in such a way that we have a plane right through the annulus of the aortic valve. And uh, when we measure that, you can see that we got a measurement uh, a perimeter of 80 yeah. millimeters, an area of 5 centimeters square. Um, and then if we look to measure our coronary height, which again is based on the 3D acquisition of the whole data set, we have to, uh, since the left main does not come at the same plane as the aortic valve on the 2D image, we have to use the 3D data set in order to measure that. And here we measured um, a coronary height of 14 millimeters, which I think matched what we found on the um, CAT scan. Um, Kini yeah, is ready to put the valve, so maybe you let her yeah, put the valve. Yeah, so <laughs> let, uh, let AK uh, work with the valve. I mean, this was really, uh, 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 Jason, okay. I think, uh, you know, you really are showing uh, okay. the, uh, yeah, the art of imaging here yeah. and how you guys are using. Yeah, so let's go forward with what 
uh, Anu is doing? Is you you want to take us through? No, go on Flora now. Go on Flora. Normally take a root shot to figure out where our annular planes are to line up for deployment. Here we've put three pigtails into the three cuffs of the aortic wow. valve to, to set ourselves up for our deployment. That's the first angle. image I've ever seen yeah. like that. One ra right radial and two ferrules Well, we did, did a relay uh, okay. and okay. with the George and so uh, with that time we decided also that patient has the creatinine of four. Yeah. Live relay uh, to Turkey. Yeah. So three pigtails. So, so the pigtails are no actually need for helping any dye. you where the cusps are. Just like we are doing a zero dye PCI, some of them is the same concept here. Perfect. No, Perfect. zero dye. The yeah. human dynamics are okay crossing the valve now. Yeah. 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 So what yeah. valve you chose here and the why did you choose Evolute Pro? You can see we've got the two pigtails down. Okay. okay. Start pacing one In the non and the left coronary cusps. Yeah. 150. A little deep, I think. This is very quick opening. A little deep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do yeah, you pace good, good, good. in every Evolute case? Because you certainly don't. Okay, good. Stop pacing. So it looks good on Fleur. I will now ask Giller on Echo to see how our Stop depth pacing. is. So the question from the panel yep. is, are you pacing in every case of Evolute or any of the, all of your cases? Or no, do you ever case. put it up without every pacing? Case. Yeah, yeah, every case, especially you see that when you know you're at the right height and when it starts flaring up, you definitely have to pace. Once you know it is anchored, then you can stop pacing. So I think there's a lot of disagreement actually on the panel. So let's hear it from the panelists. Uh, uh, Usia, Dr. Usia. So did you not plan to perform mavuloplasty before implanting the valve? Did you do valvuloplasty before? Yeah, yes. we did. Yes, yes. Okay. we did. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about the pacing? Do you always pace? No, I think uh, pacing is necessary only when we have um, regurgitation. If we have regurgitation, it is important. It's useful to pace at uh, so, so most called people here pacing. are saying no pacing. Now I don't know what's the yeah. value but of no pacing, Doctor Doctor Chandra. Can we just, can we just interrupt? It is required. Yeah, the pacing is required in uh, self expansion Okay, we are done, right? Okay, so we, we are coming. Almost up. never pace it. What does the panel think of the depth on echo? That's really the question now. Do we release or do yes. we, are we happy with that? Good. Too deep. It looks a little deep. Little deep. Oh. Hmm? But, okay, yeah, but, uh, but it's, it's more it's about it's hemodynamics. The, 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 the right. the non coronary right, cuffs here is not that deep. Not the non coronary the cuffs. The oh, septal side, I agree, is a little bit. But if you look at the valve itself, uh, I think it's going to be okay. I think it's okay. I mean, it looks okay. If you look it, it, at the. It is okay. It's it's wouldn't change. Change. So everyone here on the panel thinks you have a good if position. If you try to push yeah. it to zero, you may have a I think it will reorient itself. It's in the limit already. Good. I think we start releasing. Go. Is the patient dependent on pace marker now or not? No. Nope, nope, nope. That's, so that's good also. Yeah, take yeah. it yeah. Take the right. Mm. Okay, we are releasing now. Push wires coming And also, you know, this valve is going pay, to tilt. Pace at 120, yeah. please. So this one you should do very slow. Perfect. Yeah. It's straightening up actually yeah. nicely. Yeah. 140 then. Okay, you're pushing forward a little bit. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I am, I am, I am. Okay, good. There you go. Nice. Okay, all raised. What tap do you engage? I don't think it tilted a little bit. Just forward. But I think it tilted well. True. Yeah. One, 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 tap, one tap is still. Uh, okay, good. One less mag. Okay. <laughs> The issue with pacing, you also compromise. You can do 120 or... Yeah, that's what no, we do. That is what we do. We always control pacing. Yeah, it's Gila, not like how do you like the depth? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do... Okay, okay. No aogram at all here, right? No aogram. No, we'll do egg. one in the end. <laughs> to how's convince the, everybody that we did the right thing. Yeah, how's the T you look for AI? But in the end, only four or no, five CCs will die. No, do we well, the only one that you need to do is really check the growth, all the, the rest of the Yeah, I don't think anybody wants you to do any any shot of uh, dye in the aorta. Yeah. Yeah. I want to do one in the end. One, and, one, and one. We only want enough. you to do it for your closure. Yeah. Uh, for your for oh, your oh, leg, oh. but not in the. Pass the IR, okay. yeah. This really looks good, and you're going to have yeah, hemodynamics, AI, correct? Yeah, let's put a pigtail now. We're not really seeing much of AI. Fine. We have to post dilate? Mild. Can we have a. Mile. We're talking about projection. Mile. Mile. The back Mile. Okay, let's Can you it. show another projection uh, on the echo there. to make uh, sure? Get short, access, uh, short access. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. getting there. Okay. It's probably as good as you can get with yeah. this yeah. Cassie. Yeah. 24. Cassie yeah. 24. All right. 24, 24 true balloon. Who would chase that? 24 true. Okay. It's probably the other thing that you can do is do hemodynamics if you put the pigtail in the LV across the valve and look 
what's the end diastolic pressure that's also a good marker, and then the diastolic pressure. So all those diastolic. components help you to decide whether you need to no, post dilate no, no. or not. I think yeah, no, the, I, the, the the actually, I agree with that. Yes. Remember, in the past, we used to do a lot of uh, uh, maneuvers, and to particularly to see whether we really need to dilate and uh, uh, maybe settle with the mild paraprostatic regurgitation. Okay, can we have tea? Now up? we try to do okay. as much as yes. possible with a minimal or none. Why, 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 why. And that is where I think uh, we post dilatation. I know there is a, a pro and con of post dilatation having a little more CVA. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, now this particular case, because already a uh, few pigtails, we did not use the central device. Okay. Okay. Pace at 180. Now it's important to pace, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> now you pace. Everyone pace, right? Go. This is 180. Pressure is down to 40. Go. 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 It's probably one of nice. the a classic Good. indication for TE Good. because now Continue you're pacing. sedating Continue pacing. the patient with transthoracic only. Okay, nice. stop so pacing. When it's zero contrast, might be a good indication. Contrast, I think you need a TE. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Sharma, can you tell us what's the percentage of your TAVRs that are being intubated with uh, TEE? Yeah, right now our, our actually number is about 63 and 37. 63 conscious sedation, which we call MBAC, and 37 uh, being intubated. And many times, I would say it is rare where we thought that we will uh, do, start with the MAC and then intubate. But they, uh, anesthetists are, you know, great um, a team of cardiac anesthetists. They make a decision that some case who is very restless and so and so forth uh, that intubate. So it's still about, I would say, just about a, a two third. So, two and third how, are and done do you, without do you still do TN? Who, what, What's your still criteria? Still dynamics. Yeah, I see it. We see it on. No, let them talk. Go ahead, yeah. uh, Jeff. Yeah. So what's your criteria for who you do T and who you yeah, do MAC? What's your criteria, you uh, Dr. Sharma? The old. question is, what's your criteria for choosing, uh, you know, TEE mm -hmm. and uh, intubation yeah. versus oh. versus not? I mean, the most the important is patient with a borderline hemodynamic the severe LV dysfunction, and more important, who is very restless or anxious. They need to go to deep sedation, and rather than doing a uh, uh, intubating during the case, they do it beforehand. We actually have our uh, anesthesia team. Uh, Minaka, what is your criteria? You have the mic or no? Yeah, we, we usually do 95% uh, conscious sedation. Yes. We TE only very few. I mean, this patient we would probably TE because you, you don't want yeah. to do any mm. contrast. No contrast. Right. But in general, I think you can skip the TE now uh, no, with Corvav mm -hmm. and also with this. Looks good. Yeah, for us, it's uh, only uh, if you can't uh, get Nakam, good trans thoracic uh, image based on the Minakam is our uh, cardiac anesthetist, and he'll tell us the, what their criteria intubating these patients. All oh, right, cardiac anesthesia. Yeah. Yes, yeah. let's hear Menachem. Yeah, so for almost all the percutaneous femorals, we, 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 we do sedation unless the patient has uh, severe. Um, LV dysfunction or RV dysfunction or severe pulmonary hypertension. Um, for as far as TE is concerned, we'll even do TE for a short period of time if it just needs to be for a little bit with with sedation. Um, but if a case like this where the TE needs to be in for for an extended period of time, in order not to use contrast, that's why we used uh, general anesthesia for this one. Fantastic. But I mean, it's really nice here. I, we're looking at your, All thank right, you for the that. The TEE looks, the hemodynamics look beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Looking yeah. at the TEE, oh, yeah. now you can tell us, but I didn't see any uh, paravalvular leak or any AI. There was some MR I did Let's see. Can you tell us? One aerotogram and we are done. Yeah. <laughs> we are ready for other case. Yeah. Pick the, pick so now we are going to give eight cc's of dye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay uh, Probe up, please. We can pull the picture. Right, but you still have to do the, this for the leg because the leg is the most oh, important yeah. part. Okay, bring that okay. pigtail. So, so did you did you use the inline sheath, uh, Dr. Yeah. Sharma? I'm sorry, you didn't. No, we, we didn't. We actually just, the access was adequate. So because of, there was a complicated case, we just put a sheath in. So it's a okay. 20, it was a 20 French gore sheath we put in. Yeah, so that's one of the issues with the Evolute Pro. You have to go with the larger sheath if you don't go in line. Absolutely, but the access was not concerning here, so we were, I was comfortable doing that. So it's 14. Good. But okay. I, I agree, the inline is very useful uh, yeah. in marginal yeah. access yeah. cases. But, but in cases like that, you can use a 14 sheath in exactly. the beginning and then go okay. in line. We're taking a picture to see it. Eight cc's or die. <laughs> they like one cc. But you know, the, the, the <laughs> evil guy will tell you so it's not enough yeah, guy. Yeah, cool, looks okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, another eight cc's, good. 
No, but the echo. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. No, very, you can very see well. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Nice. Are we going to the next lab? Yeah, yeah, Thank you. We, we need to get some please. lunch. Go to room three, please. Yeah. Room three, please, Dr. Kinney.